Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Yeah, Tuesday. What's up, everybody? Tuesday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday as we saw the biggest move down in the uh, in the major markets in the last two years as it was quite the sell-off day amid additional coronavirus fears. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you can get the alerts and the updates as they happen. Uh, if you are a regular returning visitor, do me a favor, push the like button, uh, share this with some other friends, want to get people out there knowing that the channel is out there and what it is we're doing. So let's talk about what we do after the big move down that we had yesterday. So we're up a little bit this morning. I mean, when I say a little bit, I mean a very little bit. We're only up about three points this morning. Um, and we had come back to, you know, we hit our our uh, our target on our short, and we saw that that's where the market gave a little bit of bounce, and we saw a little bit of bounce from that area. So now what we're seeing is that we've continued our move down, and in the overnights is really where we saw the additional momentum back to the downside. So looking at that, we would have to look and see where's the where's the move down stem from in the overnight. And let me slide to a 15 minute chart just so that's a little bit cleaner. Um, when I move to the 15 minute level, we can see that right here at the European market open is where the sell off uh, really, really picked up some steam in the overnights. So here's our little 15 minute sell off area. Now, my my only problem with this is I'm not sure we're going to make it back up to that level as we've got that downward momentum. I think that downward momentum is going to continue. Uh, and looking at the four hour chart, our next area of demand doesn't come into play until somewhere down in this region here. So I think there's a better chance for price to continue to move down. However, the level above us is not the cleanest 15 minute level, um, just based on the fact that we've already hit it once. And we this is the second time and it's a retest of all this area in here. There is the possibility that if we base at this level, then you could see a long breakout chance. So I've got to keep both of those in mind. So here's the way I'm going to look at it is I've got a I've got a breakout long above here as well as a confirmation entry for a short. If we base in front of the confirmation area, consider the breakout as our next opportunity, right? If we don't base in front of this confirmation area, if we just give this a touch and then we move away, then the short is going to be in play. So to me, this is a very pivotal area and something to pay very specific attention to. NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ is up a little bit as well this morning, up 37 points. Uh, same kind of picture with the move down. We do have that little wick over wick area that we talked about yesterday. Price almost came into that one last night in the overnight, uh, and that's nearly where we reversed. So I'm going to leave that level in place as our as kind of our best opportunity. Uh, when I look at the at the daily chart going, you know, sliding all the way out to the daily, this is, you know, this is a big move down. But it's, you know, looking at the weekly, and I'm, I'm going to a weekly here just to kind of show and illustrate, it's not a huge um, pullback, right? It's frankly not taking us out of our weekly uptrend at all. Now, we've just come back to our weekly area of demand. Now, one thing that is interesting, uh, looking at all of these together, is the monthly chart. Look at those two reversal candlesticks on a monthly chart, right? Um, I am interested in those reversal candlesticks from a monthly chart perspective. That's the ES uh, in the NQ. It looks like this. Uh, yeah, one of our uh, one of one of one of uh, one of our one of my dear friends who who posted this out. He sent me a text yesterday and he said, "Hey, uh, does it look like we're posting a, a shooting star on a monthly chart?" Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and if it if it stays that way, that will be interesting uh, to see if we stay that way for the week. Um, because this will be the end. You know, if we if we finish out this month, this will be this will be what the shooting star candlestick looks like, uh, and those are strong reversal cap patterns. So just keep that in mind. Looking at our crude oil chart, <clears throat> so in crude we had a um, 
we had a level of, of potential reversal up here. We came super close to getting that thing filled in the overnight areas, and unfortunately, we're unable to do so as it just barely missed. Now, one of the things I did talk about yesterday was the 50% retracement of this big red candle, and that's exactly where we saw price reverse uh, and 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 come back down was at that was at that level. Um, we came really close to getting filled. Didn't quite get in there. Uh, in this, uh, didn't quite get in there inside this level, but this is a candle to candle zone. So now, what I'm going to do while this level is still valid, I'm going to make it a confirmation and I need to look at this level down below as a potential for an entry. All right. Next, gold. So here's our gold level. So yesterday I talked about this for a potential long. Now that long completely failed. Um, uh, unfortunately, we, you know, I thought we may get a decent little touch and a reversal back to this area. Price just literally just blew right through that area. So that one's a very small stop out for a small loss. Uh, now, but that picture of old demand often becomes new supply. We got a, a really nice hit back into that level, and then it sold off in the overnights. Now, once we once we came down, we hit our demand area and then rallied back up. So we rallied up from our demand area in through here. So now that level's gone. I can't use that level any longer, and I can't use this level any longer. Um, so now what am I looking at? Well, I've got a little area down in here. This is where we bounced off this zone, so I need to really look down at this area here. My problem with this area is the time of day that it was created is not great, and my move away is not the best. So while that level looks like it would be okay, I can't really lean on it uh, for a demand zone. And I need to consider this area up here where we sliced through that demand and into the supply as a potential shorting area up here. Um, Right now, that's pretty much the only levels that I have. We may see some more that get formed throughout the day, especially uh, especially as we see a little bit of basing after the market opens up. Crude oil, oh, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, where did crude oil? Bonds, let's move over to bonds and currencies. So our ZN level, bonds continuing its rally. So if you guys took the breakout in bonds, it's still running. Um, that we had a couple of days ago, so that one is still uh, still running, still moving. If you, if you uh, if you did the gap and go position in bonds, getting long above gap and go. Remember, we get long above the first candle's high, so that's where we get in, and a stop stays here. Uh, it gave you uh, you've gotten a nice little move out of this level. I think now's the time to take your profits off of this trade, as we're as we're showing a little bit of weakness up here uh, from a double topping perspective. Uh, keep an eye on this area down here. Not a great time of the day. Uh, it's a little bit of a globex session, but it, it is still worth taking a look at for price to return to this region. If we base. We may get a basing uh, a breakout opportunity above here, provided that we get basing in front of this level. In the Aussie, so the Aussie, we had talked about the gap and go trade, and unfortunately, in the Aussie gap and go, we talked about it yesterday. We had here's our here's our breakdown: one, two, three, four, five. After six candles, we hadn't hit our stop, we hadn't gone anywhere, so it gave you the opportunity to get out for basically limited loss. Uh, to no loss, and we talked a little bit about it yesterday, and then it popped up above the first candlestick's high. So if you didn't follow the six-candle rule, then you got a little stop out. Um, I still think that the better opportunities are for price to trade down, and we could look at a breakdown through here. Uh, if we don't get the breakdown through there, you have a little reversal level right up in here as well. Our euro position, so in the euro um, we had set up our, our euro short. Price came into our euro level <clears throat> and then immediately popped up just a little bit. Now, your stop probably should have been above this area here because uh, that's our next closest wicks. So you may or may not have gotten stopped out or the six candle rule is going to get you in this one. But to me, this is a small stop out position, uh, giving you an opportunity for price to kind of still continue to come down. And it's, it's one of those ones where we're just chopping along a, a bit sideways in here before the next leg uh, moving down. 
Canadian dollar worked just the other way as we got our breakdown in the Canadian, and so that trade worked out really, really well. And then our reversal trade um, hit later in the morning, and we got a nice sell-off inside the reversal trade. So both of those uh, pretty effective. Now, this traded all the way to the top of this zone, so I need to remove this level as well. So both of those levels needed to be removed. Uh, and so now what I'm looking at is the next move would be the potential breakdown below here, provided we get some basing. By the way, we do have a really nice wick over wick. I just don't think we're getting up there anytime soon. All right. Great British pound and Japanese yen. So in the pound, we uh, hit our supply level, got a really nice move back down to our breakout level and we did not get the breakout so our so our our uh, our level here worked exceptionally well for the short and then on the second touch we popped right through it uh, no big surprise on the second touch that we would pop right through it but we came to the the next level which is a confirmation short and now this is starting to move down so uh, your target on this confirmation short is going to be here so um, 949 would be your target on this confirmation short. So keep an eye on this level getting hit later today, um, uh, coming down from this area right in here. Uh, Japanese yen, unfortunately, this one was a, was a the, though we did well in the pound, the yen gave us a quick stop out. I mean, there's just no, there's no getting around that one. It just, it hit the level and popped right through. Uh, I thought we'd get a decent little reversal there on that wick over wick, but the market generally laughed at me in that idea um, and is now coming down pretty hard. Now, keep an eye though, I still think that this is, you know, this is a, a standard double topping pattern. And so we could still come down a bit further. And this could be the area to look for um, a reversal if we come back into this region. So all in all, you know, I, I still think we're going to have some more movements in us today. Um, so keep an eye, be be safe in the markets. Yesterday, I know, was a great day for a lot of traders that know how to short the market. Uh, it was a little bit more challenging for those people that kept trying to pick the bottom all day. Don't try to pick the bottoms throughout the day. Always try to find the best opportunities when the market gives them to you and take what the market gives you. So until tomorrow, everybody, I hope you guys have a great day. I will talk to you soon. See ya.